Namo Adidafa. Good morning. Thanks for joining me for a daily practice check-in. Listen, listen, listen. This beautiful sound calls us back to our true home. The first mindfulness training. Aware of the suffering caused by the destruction of life. I am committed to cultivating compassion and learning ways to protect the lives of people, animals, plants, and minerals. I am determined not to kill, not to let others kill, and not to condone any act of killing in the world, in my thinking, or in my way of life. our Dharma lesson, we've been reading Ajahn Chah's book, Everything is Teaching Us, and this morning we're continuing in a Dharma talk called Every Understanding Dukkha. Why are we suffering now? Because we were born. So we are taught to put an end to birth. This is not just talking about the body being born and the body dying. That much is easy to see. A child can understand that. The breath comes to an end, the body dies, and then it just lies there. This is what we usually mean when we talk about death. But a breathing dead person? That's something we don't know about. A dead person who can walk and talk and smile is something we haven't thought about. We only know about the corpse that's no longer breathing. And that's what we call death. It's the same with birth. When we say someone has been born, we mean that a woman went to the hospital and gave birth. But at the moment of the mind taking birth, have you noticed that? such as when you get upset over something at home. Sometimes love is born. Sometimes aversion is born. Being pleased, being displeased, all sorts of states. This is all nothing but birth. We suffer just because of this. When the eyes see something displeasing, dukkha is born. When the ears hear something that you really like, dukkha is also born. There's only suffering. The Buddha summed it all up by saying that there is only a mass of suffering. Suffering is born and suffering ceases. That's all there is. We pounce on and grab at it again and again, pouncing on arising, pouncing on cessation, never really understanding it. When dukkha arises, we call that suffering. When it ceases, we call it happiness. It's all old stuff arising and ceasing. We are taught to watch the body and mind arising and ceasing. There's nothing else outside of this. To sum it up, there is no happiness, there's only dukkha. We recognize suffering as suffering when it arises. Then when it ceases, we consider that to be happiness. We see it and designate it as such, but it isn't. It's just dukkha ceasing. Dukkha arises and ceases, arises and ceases, and we pounce on it and catch hold of it. Happiness appears and we are pleased. Unhappiness appears and we are distraught. It's really all the same, mere arising and ceasing. When there is arising, there's something, and when there's ceasing, it's gone. This is where we doubt. Thus, it's taught that dukkha arises and ceases, and outside of that, there is nothing. When you come down to it, there's only suffering, but we don't see clearly. We don't recognize clearly that there is only suffering because when it stops, we see happiness there. We seize on it and get stuck there. We don't really see the truth that everything is just arising and ceasing. The Buddha summed things up by saying that there is only arising and ceasing and nothing outside of that. This is difficult to listen to, but one who truly has a feel for the Dharma doesn't need to take hold of anything and dwells in ease. That is the truth. May all beings be well. May all beings be happy. May all beings be peaceful. Sadhu, sadhu.
Sadhu. Thank you for joining me today.